Hi, and welcome back to Football Made Simple. Two European giants clashed at the Estadio Di Stefano as Zinedine Zidane's Real Madrid hosted Antonio Conte's Inter Milan. Both sides have started poorly in the Champions League and were in precarious situations, sitting in third and fourth in the group, so the win would have been crucial. In the end, the match ended 3-2 to Real Madrid thanks to goals by Benzema, Ramos and Rodrigo, whilst Martinez and Perisic netted for Inter. The XG indicated that Real Madrid created slightly more and that both sides were clinical, ending 0.98 to 0.68. But what tactics did both managers use? Let's take a look. A quick shout out to my Patreons for helping to make this video possible. If you want to support, head on over to patreon.com slash simple and you'll get rewards like early access to videos and exclusive content. A quick reminder of the formations used by both sides, as seen on the OneFootball app. OneFootball will get you match updates, formation updates, as well as player and team stats, and so much more. And the best part is, you can get it absolutely free through the sponsored link in the description below. Let's start with what Inter looked to do on the ball. Inter were determined to play out from the back, which is shown as their back four, if you include the keeper, made up four of the top five passes in the team. And Real Madrid were keen presses throughout the game, pushing up with the high line and going almost man to man. As a result, when Handanovic looked to start the play short and they progressed into midfield, on several occasions Real were able to win the ball and begin the counter-attack and generally into a poor at ball retention in the midfield. But that's not to say that they didn't have success when playing out through the centre. They were particularly successful when they drew a man to press Handanovic as Real now had a man less pressing in these zones and Brozovic tended to drop deep to assist the builder play, and he did have the most touches for Inter. His movement into this zone would often draw a midfielder, either Valverde or more commonly Kroos, whilst the other was tied up by Barella. Importantly, by being patient with the build up deep, they drew Real's men forward, creating space in midfield. So, we often saw a centre-back make the angle to play around the pressing Benzema to receive the ball and then look to play to the man free in midfield. However, both Perisic and Martinez were willing to drop deeper into the midfield regions at times and we would see Inter's midfielder try to flick it around the corner to them. More commonly however, a deep Inter man would launch the line-breaking pass to the forwards directly who would be dropping and they would look to flick it behind the high line to the advancing wing-back or to the fellow forward when possible. However, both of Madrid's centre-backs went man-to-man -man and were aggressive in pursuing the centre-forwards to apply pressure in deeper areas. This pressure meant that the forwards' hold-up play was often fairly poor and they would lose the ball, being dispossessed seven times between the pair of them. And in the second half, Handanovic began to change things up, as the Real centre-backs were now anticipating the forwards dropping deep. And so, by going long, they almost got in behind the defence a few times. And by making these runs in behind, Real's backline began to drop deeper, opening up even more space in midfield. But the wide regions were Inter's preferred routes for attack. On the left-hand side, Young would usually be free from the build-up, However, when Handanovic went directly out to him, with only one man in the wide region, Vasquez was free to immediately apply the pressure and Young often attempted the flicked pass into Perisic, who had moved into the half space. And the 2 versus 2 up top meant that Real centre-backs could be drawn across the pitch and there was the potential of 1v1s high up the pitch. At times, we also saw Vidal move to left back, allowing Young higher up and for the forwards to remain central. On the right, the mechanism was slightly different, as it was the right centre back, D'Ambrosio, who moved to right back, allowing Hakimi to push up as the winger and to look to make expansive runs behind Mendy or into the space vacated by Ramos, as shown in the average positions.
but this did work against them for the first goal. D'Ambrosio had made the run high from his modified right back position and Mendy pressures Hakimi. With D'Ambrosio high, he doesn't have a short back pass option and has to go long towards Handanovic and this is intercepted leading to the goal. But for the first Inter goal, we see Inter use Ramos's aggression against him. The ball is played into Barella who draws him out and he uses the aforementioned first time flick around the corner to find Martinez for the finish. For the second goal, Ramos is aggressive and pushes out to win the ball again, which he does, but now he's out of position and the ball is flicked in behind him for Martinez who finds Perisic. Now, what did Madrid look to do on the ball? They also look to build up short, initially using a back two, and Inter were willing to press with both forwards, so the Madrid centre-backs often found themselves in precarious positions. After a few close calls, they shifted to a back three in the build-up, usually with Kroos or Casemiro dropping in, allowing the fullbacks to push up much higher. And Zidane generally got his fullbacks and wingers to occupy different vertical lanes when possible, so we often saw a fullback invert into midfield to give them more numbers when the wingers stayed wide. Alternatively, Madrid shifted to a double pivot of Kroos and Casemiro, which would draw Inter's midfield higher on the press, as well as their wingbacks who pressed Real's fullbacks. This opened up space between the lines for Valverde to move into to look to receive the ball. This leads to the game winning goal. Modric on for Kroos and Casemiro form the double pivot and this draws Inter's midfield higher. Valverde receives the ball between the lines drawing the centre back and D'Ambrosio has shifted to right back to cover for Hakimi. Vinicius gets in on the blind side and cuts it back to Rodrigo for the goal. But Madrid also generally looked to overload the left hand side of the pitch and when Hazard stayed wide alongside Mendy, this would draw Inter's midfielder across and subsequently the rest of the team. On the far side, Vasquez would then move into the inside channel to draw in the wing back, freeing Asensio to receive the switch from Kroos. They would then look to attack the space, although Young was usually quick to cover across. Overall, it was a sloppy and at times disjointed performance by both sides, and if they wish to go deep in this year's tournament, great improvement is needed particularly in the midfield region. But what did you make of the match? Drop it down in the comments below. And a special shout out to Ricardo Hu and Motib Adderwood for recently supporting FMS on the Ultra tier on Patreon. But that's all for today and remember, keep it simple.